In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using variables in Python. Now in Python, you're going to be dealing with a lot of data. And so a lot of times in our program, we're going to be working with all types of information and data and values. And sometimes that data can be difficult to manage. So in Python, we have this thing called a variable. And it's basically just a container where we can store certain data values. And when we use a variable, when we put those data values inside containers, it makes it a lot easier for us to work with and manage all of the different data inside of our programs. So variables are extremely helpful and it's sort of like a core topic in Python that you're really gonna wanna know and master. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you guys everything you need to know to get started with variables. We're gonna look at what they are, why they're useful, and we'll look at the different types of variables and the different types of data that we can store inside of variables. So over here in my Python file, I just have a very simple program, and it's basically just printing some text out onto the screen. And so this is actually a little story that I wrote. It says, there once was a man named George. He was 70 years old. He really liked the name George, but didn't like being 70. And so this is a valid Python program. I could go ahead and run this program and you'll see down here in the console, everything prints out and it looks great. So we have an awesome little Python program here. But let's say that inside of our story, I wanted to change the character's name. So instead of naming the character George, let's say I wanted to name the character John. Well, I'm gonna have to go through and I'm gonna have to manually change the name George to the name John at every place inside of this story where it's mentioned. So I'm gonna have to go over here and I'll say, okay, John, I'm gonna have to manually change that. And then, okay, down here, we're gonna have to, again, manually type in John and change it to John. So in order to change the character's name, I had to manually go in and change it in both places. And now let's say, okay, maybe we want to change the character's name, age also. So in addition to changing the name, we also want to change the age. Let's make him a little bit younger. So why don't we say John is going to be 35. And so you'll see here I had to come here and manually change the age and then come down here and manually change it again, right? And now that we changed it, like it's going to work. It's going to be updated in our program. But you'll notice that in order to make that change, like I had to look through the entire program, find it where that value was and change it. And this was only with four lines of the story. Imagine if I had a story that was like thousands of lines long and we mentioned the character's name and age like hundreds of times. I mean, I'd have to look through each one of those lines and manually change the character's name. And that is not a very good way for us to do this. And it's really not a good way for us to manage the data in our program, right? The character's name and the age. And so we can actually use a variable in order to store the character's name and the character's age. And when we use that variable, it'll make it a lot easier for us to put the character's name and age inside of our little program here. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can create a variable for the character's name and age. And I'm just gonna go up here above this print statement and up here, I want to create a variable. So when we create a variable in Python, we actually need to give Python a couple pieces of information. The first piece of information we need to give Python is the name of the variable. So I need to actually assign a name to this container where we're gonna be storing information. And so all I have to do is just type out the name of the variable that I wanna create. So I'm gonna create a, a variable called character name. So I'm just gonna say, character and I'm going to say underscore name. And so generally when you're creating a name for a variable in Python, you want to separate different words with an underscore. So I have two words here and I'm separating them with an underscore. And now what I need to do is I need to put a value inside of this variable. So basically what I can do is I can just say equals and over here I can type a value. So I'm just going to type out the character's name inside of quotation marks. So we're just gonna type out John. So now we have a variable for the character's name. And below this character name variable, I wanna create another variable called character age. So I'm just gonna type out character underscore age, and I'm gonna set this equal to the character's age, which is 35. So we now have two variables, one representing the character's name and one representing the character's age. So what I can do now is I can replace the character's name inside of the story with 
this variable. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So if we wanna put a variable inside of this print statement, I'm actually gonna to have to do a couple things. The first thing I'm gonna to have to do is end off this text in here. So I'm gonna to have to put a quotation marks here at the end. And you can see I'm basically wrapping this whole thing into a single like quoted line. And now I also have this text over here at the end. So I'm gonna to have to put a quotation mark here. So now I have a bunch of text here in quotation marks. And then I also have text over here in quotation marks. Now inside of here, instead of saying the character's name, I wanna to refer to that character name variable. So I'm just gonna say plus character underscore name, and I wanna say another plus sign. So I basically am saying, I wanna print out all of this text plus the value that's stored inside of character name plus all of this text. And what this will do is it'll actually print out the character's name when we print this. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this program. And you'll see down here, and actually let me put a space over here and we'll run it again. So you can see down here, we still are printing out there once was a man named John. And so what Python is doing is when it executes this line of code, it's coming over here and it's seeing, oh, okay, they wanna print out the value inside of character name. So it, Python's gonna go up here, it's gonna get the value and it's gonna insert it inside of there. So I can basically do this for every instance of the character name in my file. So I can, you know, I'll just copy this guy right here and I can just paste it down here where the character's name is. So I'll paste this and you can see now we're doing exactly the same thing that we did up there. I can also do this for the character's age. So I'm gonna come down here and I'll paste in what we just pasted in. And I'm gonna change this, instead of character name, we'll change it to character age. And I'm gonna do this in one more spot. So we're gonna do this over here where we're mentioning the age. And again, I'll just change this to character age. And so now when I run this program, it's gonna print out the same story that we were printing out before, but now I don't actually have to type in the character's name and the character's age. I can just refer to this variable. And the cool thing about variables is if I wanted to change the character's name, now all I have to do is change it up here. So I could change the character's name to like Tom or something. And we could also change their age. So I could change the age to be like 50. And now that's gonna automatically update throughout our entire story. So when I click this play button, you'll see now we're using the name Tom and he's 50 years old. So that's where variables can come in handy and this can be a really awesome way to control and manage the data that's inside of our programs. With variables, you can also modify their values. So for example, let's say that halfway through the story, I wanted to change the character's name. Well, I can just make some new lines over here and down here, I can actually assign a new value to one of these variables. So I could say like character underscore name and in order to give it a different value, all I have to do is just say equals and we'll give it a different value. So let's say halfway through the story, we wanna change the character's name to Mike. Well, now when I run on my program, you'll see here in the first part of the story, it says there once was a man named Tom. And in the second part of the story, it's referring to the name as Mike. So I actually updated the variable inside of my program over here. And that's a really awesome way, you know, a lot of times in these programs, you're gonna to wanna to be modifying the values of variables. And so you can do it just like that. And so finally, I wanna to talk to you guys about the different types of data that we can store inside of these variables. So over here, I have the character name and the character age. And I'm actually storing what are called strings. So a string is basically just plain text, right? So the name Tom, that's just plain text. Um, down here, these guys are strings as well. So there's a data type in Python called a string, and it's just basically gonna store plain text. So, you know, any text that you would have like in a story or, you know, someone's name, you can store inside of a string. There's also another type of data that we can store inside of Python, which is numbers. So in addition to storing text, we can also store numbers. So if I wanted to store a number, for example, let's say we wanted to store the character age instead of inside of a string, we could store it inside of a number. So I could just type out 50. 
And when we're storing a number, we don't need these quotation marks. You only need that quotation mark when you're storing a string. So if I wanted to store a number, I can just write it out like this. And in addition to using whole numbers, I could also use decimal numbers. So I could say like 50.5678213. And Python's gonna be able to store that number as well. So you can store all different types of numbers. And we can also store what's called a Boolean value. And a Boolean value is essentially a true or a false value. And there's a lot of instances in programming where we're gonna wanna represent true or false data. For example, I could have a variable called like is male, and this would tell me whether or not someone was a male. And in my case, it would be true because I'm a guy, right? So I can, actually this needs to be capital. So I could store a value of either true or false. And actually, if we were naming this in Python, we'd wanna use an underscore. So I would say is underscore male, and this can be either true or false. So true or false values is maybe not something that you're used to dealing with like in the real world, but in programming, we're gonna be using true or false values all the time. They're super important. So like I said, there's three basic types of data that we can work with in Python. There's strings, which is just like plain text, numbers which would be like either decimal numbers or whole numbers like this and there's true or false values and these are the basic types of data i mean there's a bunch of other types of data that we can use but i would say 99 percent of the time as a new user and a new programmer to python you're just going to be dealing with these three types of data so those are the basics of the data and also with variables and you're going to be using variables all the time in Python. So you definitely want to practice up and get comfortable using them. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about working with strings in Python. Now, one of the most common types of data that we're going to be working with in Python is going to be strings and strings are basically just plain text. So any text, that we wanna have inside of our program, we can store inside of a string. So I wanna to talk to you guys about all the cool things we can do with strings, and we're basically just gonna get a full introduction into why strings are awesome. So over here, I'm just gonna actually print out a string. So I'm just gonna say print, and inside of these parentheses, I can type out a string. In order to create a string, I need to use quotation marks. So I can make an open and close quotation marks, just like that, now inside of the quotation mark, I can put whatever text I want the string to have. So we could say like draft academy. And so now we have a string with the text draft academy inside of it. So if I run my program now down here, we're going to print out draft academy, as you can see. And when we have these strings, there's actually a bunch of cool things that we can do with them. So one thing I could do would be to create a new line inside of the string. So if I wanted, I could come over here and I could say backslash n, and you can see it got highlighted in a different color. And what this is gonna do is it's actually gonna insert a new line into the string. So now it's gonna say draft on one line and academy on another line. So I'm gonna click play, and you'll see down here we just get draft academy. In addition to the backslash n, I could also use a backslash quotation mark. So if I wanted to put a quotation mark inside of my string, I can't just put a quotation mark like that because Python's gonna think that I'm trying to end this string. So if I wanna include a quotation mark, I can just use this special backslash character and that's called the escape character and it basically just tells Python that whatever character comes after it, we want to render literally. So when I say backslash quotation mark, it basically means like, hey Python, I wanna print out a quotation mark. And so now we'll be able to print out a quotation mark right there. I can also use this to print out a backslash. So if I needed to print out a backslash, I could say backslash and it'll just print out a normal backslash now. So you can see just like that. So if you want, you can use that backslash to make new lines or print out quotation marks, or you can just use it as a normal backslash. In addition to just typing out a string here, I could also create a string variable. So I could come down he up here and we can create a variable and we'll just call it phrase and I'm gonna set it equal to draft academy. So I can store this string value inside of a variable called phrase, and then when I wanna print out that variable, or I wanna access that string variable, I can just 
type the name of the variable and you'll see that it's going to print out the value that was stored inside of it. I can also use something called concatenation and concatenation is basically the process of taking a string and appending another string onto it. So I could come over here and I could say phrase and I could say plus and now I can add in another string. So I could say like is cool and now this is going to say draft academy is cool. So I'm basically appending another string onto another one. They call that concatenation. And so in addition to doing all that stuff, we can also use special things called functions. And a function is basically just a little block of code that we can run and it'll perform a specific operation for us. And so we can use functions to modify our strings and we can also use functions to get information about our strings. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of common functions we can use with these strings and they're actually going to do awesome stuff. So in order to access one of these functions, I can just say phrase and then I can say dot. And I'm going to show you guys a function that we can use to convert this string entirely into lowercase. So I could just say phrase dot lower and then I'm going to want to type in open and close parentheses. And this will take this phrase, it'll take my string and it'll convert it to lowercase. So you can see now we just have draft academy down here, but it's entirely in lowercase. I could also do the same thing for uppercase. So I could say phrase dot upper and this will convert the entire string into uppercase. You can see now it's entirely uppercase. So in addition to converting the string into uppercase and lowercase, I could also check to see if a string is entirely uppercase or entirely lowercase. So for example, I could say phrase dot is upper and this is going to give me back a true or a false value. So it's going to be true if the string is entirely uppercase or false if it's not. And you can see here we're getting a false value because this is an uppercase. I can also use these functions in combination with each other. So for example, I could say phrase dot upper and then a parentheses. And then after this, I could say dot is upper. And now what it's going to do is it's going to run this upper function. It's going to convert it into uppercase. And then it's going to run this is upper function right after that. And you'll see now we're going to get a true value back because it will have converted the whole thing into uppercase. So you can see now we're getting a true value. So you can use these functions one after another. It can be really useful. And there's a few other ones that I want to show you. So we can also figure out the length of this string. So if I wanted to figure out how many characters were inside of this string, I could just say len. And I'm actually going to make an open parentheses and I'm going to make a close parentheses. So I'm essentially saying len and this is another function. It's the length function. And inside of this len function, I'm actually passing this phrase variable. I'm basically giving the length function this and it's going to spit out a number. So it'll tell me how many characters are inside of this string. And so you can see here we get 15 because there's 15 characters inside of draft Academy. So that's how we can get the length of a string and that's going to be really useful as we go forward in Python. We can also get individual characters inside of a string. So imagine if I wanted to just grab one of these characters, like imagine if I wanted to figure out what the first character in this string is. Well, I can actually use an open and closed square bracket just like that. And in here I can specify the index of the character that I want to grab. So if I wanted to grab the first character in this string, I can put in a zero. So if I say phrase square bracket zero, this is going to give me that capital G. And you can see down here, that's what gets printed out. Now I want to point something out. In Python, when we're working with strings, a string gets indexed starting with zero. So you'll notice that in order to access this G, I had to put a zero in here. And that's because in Python, when we use indexes on a string, we start with zero. So if Python is counting the characters or it's indexing the characters in a string, it's going to start with zero. So it's going to say G is zero, I is one, R is two, A is three. So we would say that G is at position zero in the string, I is at position one, R is at position two, A is at position three, etc. So we start counting at zero. So if I wanted to access the first character in the string, this G, I have to say phrase zero. And that's just a special thing uh, in Python. And actually most programming languages do that. So they'll start with zero. So for example, if I wanted to access this A, 
I'm gonna have to put zero, one, two, three. So if I put three inside of here, now we'll be able to access that first A. As you can see, we get an A right here. So this is actually really useful, being able to grab a specific character inside of a string, and you're gonna be using that a lot as we go forward in Python. There's also another really awesome function that we can use, and it's called the index function. And basically what the index function will do is it'll tell us where a specific character or string is located inside of our string. So I could say phrase, dot index and I can actually give this a value so sometimes when we use these functions in Python we can actually give them information so I can give this a value and we would call this passing a parameter so I would call a value that I would give to a function a parameter and you'll hear that word a lot so for example I could say inside of here capital G and now this is gonna return the index of the capital G inside of our string so it should give us back a zero because G is at the zeroth index. And you'll see down here that we get a zero because that's where G is. So for example, if I put an A inside of here, like a lowercase a, it should give me zero, one, two, three, because that's where the first A is inside of this string. So I can click the play button and you'll see it's giving us a three. You can also put actual words in here. So for example, I could put like, Academy in here, or I could even just put like ACAD, and this is gonna tell me where this starts inside of my string. So when I click play, it's gonna give me an eight because that's where Academy starts, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I put something in here that wasn't in the string, so for example, if I put a Z in here, that's not in here, it's actually gonna throw an error. So when I play this, you'll see that we get this error down here because Z is not found inside of our program. So that index function, again, can be really useful and we'll be using that a lot. There's also one more that I wanna show you which is called replace. So we can say phrase.replace and in here I can actually give this two parameters. So I can give this replace function two values that it can use. And the first thing I want you to give it is what I want to replace. So for example, I could say draft and then I'm gonna put a comma in here and I wanna put in here what I wanna replace draft with. So I could just say like elephant. And now instead of saying draft academy, this is gonna print out elephant academy. So you can see down here, it just says elephant academy. So this replace function can be really awesome because we can replace certain words or even certain letters inside of our strings with other ones. So those are just some basic ways that we can work with strings inside of Python. And there's a lot of these different functions that we can use with strings. These are some of the most common, the ones that I just showed you right now. But if you just do a Google search, you can find all sorts of uh, Python functions that you can try out and use and you know see what they do. Um, but you definitely wanna get comfortable working with strings in Python because you're gonna be working with them a lot.